Hey guys, what's going on? All right, so if you caught it, I did a video about um, the Navy being in the South China Sea and, you know, pretty much in regards to what's going on, especially being that we had the two ships last year have those collisions and we lost 17 sailors. Um, and I just want to say that I'm kind of looking at it in a different situation not kind of i am 100 percent looking at it in a different situation in a different light um i th i think this was the situation i think my emotional attachment to you know the sailors and their family uh kind of clouded my judgment of what's really going on in the south china sea uh but Again, I was saying what exactly they, you know, it, what was coming from Washington. They were saying it's nothing about national security. It is freedom of navigation and we are free to do that. And they didn't say anything else. But since then, General Mattis uh, had a meeting in Singapore and he went into a lot more detail, which I absolutely love that he did so this puts everything into perspective and I kind of figured this was the reason we were there because that's kind of the reason we've been there for a long time but being that they put it out to where it's like oh we're just doing an exercise out there no worries this and that okay so here's the thing we are out there for a legitimate reason we're out there for not only our allies but for ourselves as well. There's a difference between interna international waters and waters that are owned by territories. I'm going to go through, you know, to break that down for y'all in a little slideshow that I'm about to do. That way y'all can kind of understand it as well and kind of see the big picture of why we are actually there. Um, but Lieutenant General Kenneth McKenzie, the director of Joint Staff, um, told reporters, I would just tell you the U.S. military has a lot of experience in the Western Pacific taking down small islands. So it is being reported that he essentially threatened to blow up those islands. Did he? I don't know. Let's look at... Um, why we're actually out there. Let me just go back. Okay, so back in 2014, these islands, they really didn't even exist. This is Fiery Island. There's six other islands and many more just kind of popping up all over the place. And we don't really know, you know, there's such a turmoil of what to do about these islands. Okay, and so here's Fiery Island. The problem is, they are building things like a 10,000 foot airstrip, an advanced radar system, advanced missile systems, all of these things. Back in 2014, we started seeing these ships bringing, bringing sand and rock on, pouring it on top of these, essentially these reefs. They, what were they doing? Well, they were building islands. And that's when it kind of caught our attention, like they were building three and a half acres per day. And what they want to do is pretty much dominate this area and militarize it, although they're saying otherwise. You can see right here that there's definitely bases going up. Um, these are satellite pictures from v 2016, and they're, they started putting these on there first and kind of putting people in just random buildings to where they could actually say they claim these areas, which they technically don't have the South China Sea is very rich in natural resources, and so it is it's a big deal to a lot of people. There's an estimated 11 billion barrels of oil, 190 trillion feet of natural gas. They are 30% of the global shipping trade um, routes. And so this affects more people, you know, 2.2 billion people in, just this, in China, and it affects people in all, all countries. And what happened was, you were supposed to abide by what's called United Nations Convention of Law of the Sea, the Exclusive Economic Zone, or EEZ. 
this pretty much says that each territory has 200 nautical miles, which they claim as their territory, uh, also called the EEZ. So five countries currently uh, lay claim to the parts of the South China Sea, and by law, they can. Let's explain this 200 EEZ. Let's say that China finds some oil off their coast. Well, they would lay claim to that, and anything outside of that zone would be considered international waters, and it would belong to everybody. That's international law. And so everyone is adhering to this law except well, China. China is claiming something they're calling historical claim. Um, nothing that's actually um, real. It's just what they claim that it's historically they found it or, you know, whatever, and they own it. Well, that's not legal. After the World War II, when Japan, you know, lost a bunch of stuff. Uh, China decided to pretty much put nine dashes on a map and said, hey, this is ours, we own it, called the Nash, nine dash law, line, I'm sorry. And since they're so big, people don't really want to fight with them. So let's look at the uh, Spratly Islands. It's pretty hard to lay claim to any uninhabited island, you know, or reef or something like that. So that's when China decided to start building upon them. They originally looked something like this, just pieces of, you know, sand, and they started building up on these, and essentially they are making these into naval bases, and that is what the U.S. Navy is concerned with. We don't want them to take over that entire area. They are currently bullying all the surrounding smaller places by using something called the cabbage strategy. What that is, is kind of like battleship. Um, you know, they go around an island and place all of these ships all around the islands. And they've even stopped Phil the Philippines from getting their cargo that they needed by doing such things, by bullying them like this. Back in 2015, they even tried to put in an air identification zone saying that no one could fly through there without being confirmed by China, which is pretty crazy because it's international airspace. Um, and then we go on to when the Philippines, you know, tried to fight this, and they actually won. And China pretty much said, mm, oh, well, that I, I don't really care. So America kind of tried to get involved and help them. Uh, you know, it's a sticky situation because we don't want to cause situations with China, but we also don't want them to bully these smaller countries with a small navy or with no navy at all. So, you know, we look out for our allies also. And you can, you know, these little bitty areas with, that's why we send out our navy to kind of police places that are getting bullied. Um, so the angry China shadows, U.S. warships near these man-made islands. So it's really getting worse. South China Sea, Indonesia Navy fires an arrest for Chinese fishermen. I mean, it's getting bad. All right, I hope that made a lot more sense about why we're actually out there and makes you feel a little bit safer. Now, my feelings remain the, sta the same about the ships from last year, USS McCain and the USS Fitzgerald, but um, I still don't think that there is complete transparency. And if we're gonna hold other countries to a standard of transparency, shouldn't we kind of hold ourselves to that same transparency? Um, I believe yes. Uh, so I feel that the sailors on board, the Higgins and the Antietam are trained and are going to do a fine job in the South China Sea. I don't want anybody to think that I meant that by any means. Um, I don't think anybody did, but I just wanted to make that clear. Also, well, I think I'll just do this in a totally different video, um, just about some other stuff. But I hope all of that makes sense. And if you have any questions about what's going on, if you are a sailor, I would love, 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 love to get your input, especially if you're over there or if you've been out there. Um, if you don't want to comment in the video, you can always private message me and I would love to hear from you.
And if you have different thoughts about what we should do out there. Oh, I did want to read some funny comments. Not funny, but some of them were comments. Comments from underneath the General Mattis's video where he's in Singapore. So let me get those out. All right, guys. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. If y'all ever have any requests or anything, you know I do have a Discord channel. It's in my description, as well as any ways that you would like to support my channel. Um, also, I am going to start um, streaming on Twitch. So if you are a um, Twitch user, then go ahead and follow me. I'm going to put that. It should be in my description. If not, I will add that. And if you are an Amazon Prime member, this is specially for you. You can subscribe to me on Twitch for free. You can always follow people for free on Twitch, but um, if you subscribe to someone, I, I don't know, they make like a dollar a month or something. <laughs> I don't know, but it, every little bit helps. But you don't even have to pay for it. If you're already an Amazon Prime member, it's part of your package anyway. So even if you're not gonna go onto Twitch, I might just do a whole video on getting onto Twitch because a lot of people haven't been on there. But um, it's super easy. Download the app. It's called Twitch. And you just go subscribe to me as an Amazon Prime member and it's free. And I promise you, you will always get notifications when I am live. Always. I have not missed any of notifications whenever I'm watching anybody on Twitch. They are amazing with their notifications and there's no censoring. You can essentially talk about everything. All the stuff that we have to censor ourselves for on this platform, you don't have to do that over there. So we can talk about all of the stuff that we know we'll get, you know, everything. So, um, and it's a fun place to be. Um, so, if you have any questions about Twitch, ask them whatever I will put that link in the description and probably in the pinned comments so again y'all have a wonderful day and I might go live tonight on my backup channel if you are if you're not subscribed to that please subscribe to my backup channel because that's the only place I can go live right now until I start going live on twitch because of the censorship all right guys y'all have a wonderful Saturday bye the U.S. Pacific Command is now the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command. This person's just really upset about China. We've got some funny things here. Y'all can pause it if y'all want to actually read them. I just picked out a few that were kind of interesting. And here's some shirts from my store. That's me wearing my shirt. That's the back of it. Uh, we now have kid stuff. Uh, cool decals for your vehicle. The guy comes separately. You know, Second Amendment, dads for Father's Day, all kind of stuff. Tanks, you know, everything veteran owned and operated, just awesome stuff. Um, if you have not checked that out, go ahead and check that out. Um, I always, oh, actually, we have an amazing sale. Almost all of these shirts are $15.99 and below, or $19.99. There's, and then, of course, I have other stuff. I love supporting other channels. Uh, I made this for Lift the Veil. He has cool shirts too. No matter how you feel about each other,